Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reviewing the fourth Transformers movie, Transformers Age of Extinction. For the record, at some point, Michael Bay did say that this was going to be his last Transformers movie. But unfortunately, that is not the case. I think to start things off, I have to preference that this movie is almost three hours. That's almost an equivalent of Transformers Endgame, which I desperately do not want to see happen. Coming off of the first trilogy, Sam and Megan Fox are both gone now. Michael Bay is starting over from scratch with his human characters, because I guess they're still relevant somehow. Now, with everything that's said and done, almost every single line in every single scene is either over the top, dramatic, hysterical, explosions, sexual, or just racist, or sexist, or something. This movie is just so insane on almost every level. And I just can't cover all of it. So I'm not going to, but I will definitely show and highlight some of the better things from this movie. And to preference again, when I say better, I mean things that I found unusually enjoyable. Since this movie starts a small starting over point, uh, I have to say this movie is definitely a major drop in every aspect of this franchise. I guess we'll just dive into the movie because I don't want to say plot or story because I know it's not there. So the movie preferences that since the Battle of Chicago, the military is now fed up with Transformers, much like we are, and they're hunting down and killing every single last one of them. They're contradicting themselves, and they're hypocrites at the same time, because they're also using a Transformer as a bounty hunter to kill other Transformers. They don't make a whole lot of sense, but what else does? So then it introduces us to the new ragtastic team of human characters. We got Cade Yeager. We got his daughter, Tessa, who's not fooling anyone, and Michael Bay is still getting hot actresses that are trying to play characters that are under 18, and it's just not working. We're introduced to his really obnoxious, stupid, dumbass friend who can't throw a football for his life. And Cade is in a movie theater for whatever reason, and he buys an old truck for $150, which is a problem in itself. But he tows this truck back to his house, okay? And... You think it's just a simple premise of him buying a truck and bring it back to his house and then, oh, surprise, it's got to be Optimus. But no, it's not. We can't have something that simple and that normal. One of the things that sticks out in this opening segment is that Cade is so sure of himself and determined that he's going to be able to put his daughter through college on his bullshit inventions. And he's like, look, I fixed that. It's 100 bucks. I fixed that. It's 250. If I would have been able to fix that before you broke it even more, it would have been 20 bucks. This stuff is what's going to put you through college. This dude is going to be making shit inventions for the next thousand years to put his daughter through college. 20 bucks, bet. Like, no. So things are creepy and out of pocket as usual. And eventually, Kate finds out that this is an Autobot. Oh, man. And Kate's friend, who I can't believe at all for a second that it's actually his friend. Because his friend immediately wants to throw him under the bus and send in Optimus in exchange for money from the government. It is a really stupid and petty thing, and I honestly hate him for it. But his friend calls the government, and they bomb rush his house, and they start this big chase, and they're being hunted by the government. They all hop into a car, which is Tessa's not-so-secret boyfriend now, and they go on this big chase, and eventually they escape with Optimus, but... Not before Lockdown sets off this Mega Transformers nuke and ends up killing Cade's friend. Death, brought to you by Lamborghini Aventador LP700. But this scene isn't all a failure. It has a couple gems like these. You're not her boyfriend! Her name's Shane and he's right, Dad! I also love how those are the only two qualities of the character you will ever know in this entire movie. So they get taken to an old gas station where Optimus has the worst CGI ever. Then they hit the road and meet up with a brand new group of shit Autobots. You got gun-heavy redneck, borderline racist samurai car, you've got the worst form of Bumblebee yet, and this angry, condescending green Transformer who's kind of techy and has a trench coat. 
I don't know if that makes sense. And then I've got the leader of what used to be the Autobots, Darth Prime. Because yes, he is back, and he's back with a vengeance. Humans have asked us to play by their rules. Well, the rules have just changed. He's going to die. Die, 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 We get to see one of the characters that's in charge of this big corporation, KSI, and they're making a new batch of Transformers because they realize, hey, they're made of this alien metal. Oh, what is this metal? It's called Transformium, which is dead ass the word they use in this movie, okay? With this metal, along with the genetic coding, I guess? Taking from the decapitated Megatron head, they're trying to create all of these brand new Transformers. The movie only really showcases two. One of them is a Bumblebee ripoff named Stinger, and the second one is Galvatron. Algorithms! Math! Why can't we make what we want to make the way we want to make it? Honestly, it's around this scene that I realized everyone in this movie is just a giant puss baby. Everyone is just throwing tantrums, blowing shit up, being angry, being absolute fucking children. And it makes sense because I guess it was written by children. So I guess Cade got captured so the Autobots try and rescue him and I guess this is their attempt at it. Don't you get it? We don't need you. That was cruel. So after they bust in, they go back on the road, but all of a sudden this guy's petty now, so he sends Galvatron after them, and it ends in a big fight and kerfuffle, and even a lockdown shows up. Michael Bay is really just sitting there, like, you know what, something needs to be distinct about lockdown. What, what is it going to be, guys? You know what he needs? Base cannon. Unfortunately, that did not give Optimus enough strength to keep himself and Cade's daughter Tessa from getting kidnapped. And then Cade and her weird boyfriend have to stole away with the Autobots to go and try and rescue Optimus and Tessa. Since Lockdown captured Optimus, which was his goal, he decided to fulfill his trade with the humans. A deal is done. One prime for one seat. Handle it with care. While a lot of shit has happened, this is the first clear indication of what the plot is really about. Guess what? It's another Transformers alien artifact. Yeah, this makes four, guys. So the Autobots, Cade, and Tessa's boyfriend all go up onto the ship. And there's some shenanigans like these fuckers, but they get rescued and they come back down to Earth as Lockdown leaves Earth. I don't know where he's going, but he's just leaving. They escape and steal a ship in the most over-the-top, insane fashion, but it gives us the best moment in the whole movie. You guys ready for this shit? Okay, sir! You better have insurance. Insurance? It's a freaking spaceship. You go get insurance on a freaking spaceship. Good luck with that, buddy. Your car? Huh? Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Mm, genius. The company KSI has been using Megatron's noggin, and they've been accidentally uploading his consciousness into Galvatron. So now Megatron is in charge of him, and Megatron is basically reborn. Since the characters and possibly the audience doesn't even know what the fuck is going on, they have brains explain it to them. He's been playing KSI all this time. All so that he can manipulate them into going after the seed. Wait, the seed? And that's what Galvatron wants to happen again. He wants to detonate that seed in the biggest city and kill millions. So you may have noticed, uh, they've already started using the seed more frequently in this movie, and it only gets better from here. I want you to bring me the seed, but I want you to bring it to me there. So Joshua, who's in charge of KSI, is planning to bring the seed to China. I don't know why, but they're going there. Kate calls Joshua from a phone I don't know where he got from, and I don't know how he got his number, 
but he does, and he says this shit. Look, I know you have a conscience because you're an inventor like me. Do not let Galvatron anywhere near that seed. So the humans and Autobots get on the ship they stole from Lockdown's bigger ship, and they also yeet to China as well. This transitions into the third act, where we have Joshua discussing the seed in China before the Autobots arrive and cause more chaos. It's at this point that Galvatron is fed up with whatever the fuck is happening, and he activates and says this shit. Rise up! Go find my seed! <sighs> That's a little too sexual for me, Megatron. But it doesn't settle down because you've got Galvatron and his ratchet Decepticons trying to fight the Autobots and the humans because I guess they still matter. And at this point, they're just laying waste to China, just wrecking shit up, trying to fight over the fucking seed in the middle of Chinatown, and no one's having it. Lockdown sees Optimus left, so he's like, fuck, I gotta go back to Earth now. So you have Lockdown pretty much activating this big-ass beacon of, like, magnetism, and he's yeeting a bunch of shit up and dropping it back down over and over again. While chaos ensues, Cade and Joshua are trying to keep the seed away from all the Decepticons and the evil people, and you basically just have a bunch of fuckers fighting over a seed. And Optimus has a ship blasted down, and they crash, and then he's like, you know what, fuck it, let's release the Dinobots. And then he goes off and says this. We're giving you freedom! You defend my family. Or die. What? That is the complete opposite of what you said two seconds ago after bitch slapping a dinosaur. Jesus, this movie is just so inconsistent and has no coherence of anything going the fuck on. Ugh, you just wanna die. So things are pretty close to the end, and you kind of have a couple moments like this contradicting line. All he wants to hear you say is that something should never be invented. And then this is the main end goal is for Optimus to be like, Get that seed safely to the hills. So, the final fight is basically the Autobots playing hot potato with the seed, and Kate is confronted by the head corporate guy from KSI. A few seconds later, and Optimus yeets in to just do his thing at this point. He's going to die. Lockdown heads over and fights Optimus. Bumblebee chimes in for a second, but ultimately Optimus finishes things off in his classic fashion of the most brutal murder of all time. We end things off yet again with another sweaty, conclusive sunrise, and Galvatron walks off into the distance like the mega puss baby he is. The Autobots and humans are standing around China not giving two shits at the international damage they've caused. The Dinobots go off and wander the land free at last, because I guess that's a good idea. After Optimus is given the seed, he jets off and flies off into space, announcing he is going to find the Transformers creators. We have finally arrived at the end of the three hour long Transformers movie Age of Extinction. Now, this was a hell of a movie, because as funny and enjoyable as I find this movie at times, I still wouldn't classify it as a quality film to spend your money on in theaters. After everything that's been done in this three hour saga of just chaos, there is only one true thing I think I can take from this movie. The overarching theme is nothing to do with the Transformers or humans or the seed. No, the overarching theme to this movie is that the movie gives zero care about life in general. It is absolutely the polar opposite of the ideals of the Autobots from the first few movies. Optimus is just a straight up killer now as seen in the third one. And Bumblebee is a jealous, self-centered bitch who copies the design of Stinger, and it's really sad to see that his character's been toned down to this shit. The other Autobots aren't that interesting either. They have bits of personality, finally, I guess? But they're so simple and just straight up crazy, I don't know why it's important at all. I don't know why this movie's insane, but it's just so hard to watch in general. Not to beat a dead horse, but this movie does the same fucking story again. 
people are just working with Transformers to stop the evil people and Decepticons from using the alien object to destroy the Earth in some fashion. Much like the other ones, this movie is horribly paced, only it's worse because this movie is almost three hours long. And this one is by far the longest, and you feel it. Not because, yeah, it's been a while since you've sat up from the couch, but because it's constantly confusing and absurd for no reason, you start to feel the weight and, and energy just drain from yourself as you're trying to continue watching and processing it. The visuals are a massive downgrade because the Autobots and Transformers are, for some reason, supposed to look more human-like. Yeah, most of them are vibrant, saturated, colorful pieces of shit, but they don't resemble their vehicles at all. Like, except for maybe the idea of colors matching. To start off with Optimus, he goes from a fucking truck to this. Do you see it? Well, let me tell ya, there are no wheels anywhere. They just vanish. I don't know if it's his organs for some reason or what, they're just gone. And I can't tell that there's any other distinct features about it. The first form of Bumblebee, the one that's mostly black, is actually a fairly decent transformation still, okay? But then he goes into the new 2014 Camaro, like this, and he ends up stealing the design from Stinger and then looks like this. I'm not even gonna attempt the fucking green car with the trench coat, but the blue car is just not the same. It just doesn't look the same at all. Even the fucking shade of blue is so much more darker and more sapphire than this really bullshit light blue color. And the fucking redneck guy, honestly, it's so stupid and, and just so, so much of a moot point. I don't even care. He's not like his vehicle at all. One of the biggest Transformers to take part in this is Lockdown. He's a pretty big part of the movie and he goes from a Lamborghini to this shit. He is a full-on fucking robot. He has no resemblance to any possible piece from that Lamborghini, let alone tires. I mean, fuck me, they don't need tires to be Transformers anymore, I guess. But he just doesn't look like it at fucking all, and that's without taking the face cannon into consideration. The other explosions and special effects are still fine, but sometimes you can tell if it's going to be a green screen or not, and they just are more underwhelming than they've ever been in the past. I'm not even going to touch the dialogue in the script because I know it's whack as fuck. Some of it's kind of funny, but it's just not good at fucking all. The story is basically non-existent. The characters are all aggressive, puss baby, asshat, cunts that I just can't get over in this. I'm like, why are they like this? Excuse me! Excuse me, lady! Excuse me! Oh my god! How do you say get the fuck out of the way in Chinese? Overall, it's chaotic and insane as usual, but I found more enjoyment out of this one, you know? I, I think I'd honestly give this one a solid, I want the seed. I just don't know if I want the seed right now. Out of 10. And I just, I want the seed. I'm not saying I don't want the seed. I'm just saying I don't know if I, if I want the seed right now. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this somewhat long review of Transformers Age of Extinction, and if you did, feel free to like and subscribe down below, and comment if you enjoyed this movie at all, and on that note, let's hear our final send-off words from the iconic Optimus Prime. I am Optimus Prime, and this message is to my creators, leave planet Earth alone, cause I'm coming.